Hey, welcome to IndieCade 2015. And I'm here with Akira, man, who is no stranger to IndieCade. Not a stranger at all. Uh, but this year, you're actually, instead of being a part, well, you're actually setting up everything as well. So you're setting up a lot of what's going on in IndieCade, but you also have a game here. Uh, and maybe they won't kill you. Yes, yes, I'm a uh, nominee this year. Uh, you're also a nominee this year. That is, you are, you are a powerhouse. You do a little bit of everything. Oh, <laughs> you humble me. <laughs> that is incredible. So let's get down to it. Tell us about the game. Oh, I'll say, so, um, and maybe they won't kill you is um, an empathetic LARP experience. Uh, it puts you in the place of a uh, poor black American, basically. Um, in the experience, uh, you have a series of choices that you're confronted. You're just trying to go to your own local corner store in your own neighborhood. Right. Um, and throughout that journey, you're profiled. And you, a, as the uh, person that's participating, you yourself get to make the choice if you want to speak up about it or not. Uh, but then if you choose to speak up about it, you have to deal with the consequences of that. And what are some of the consequences? Uh, well, they range from... Um, it, the way it works is you have a frustration counter and then your frustration is taken into account. So while you as a person might be saying something rather calmly, that frustration is going to kind of like amplify the effect. So in, within like kind of like our world, uh, when you as a player might just say, uh, why am I being stopped officer? Uh, in the game world, do if you have a high frustration, it might be interpreted as like, why am I being stopped? You know, right. So, the, yeah. the, which is great because yeah. it, it's often an account of like a game that you know you know what you should be saying in order to win the game. Yeah. But in this time, you're you're having to take it into account. Like there's this this force that is going to be upon you that you know whenever you choose something to say that you have to also take it into account that that may be uh, changed yes, once it comes out. Yes. Definitely. Uh, there's a it kind of like balances it out versus who it is. So some of the results that can happen um, if it doesn't go well for you. Uh, we really need only to look at uh, the news today to really see what the, those are. Yeah, I was about so. to say, like, when did you like get an idea that you wanted to make this game? Like, uh, on the evening of the, um, the announcement that they were not to uh, indict uh, Darren Wilson. And wow. then the Ferguson riots happened, and on my Facebook feed, uh, I had a lot of friends that just seemed to be more outraged about the fact that there was property damage rather than the fact that people were dying. Right. Um, and I just, uh, uh, it's saddening to me, but I also understand that it's because of a lack of like understanding of what people were going through. That anger in that community comes from somewhere. It doesn't, it didn't just, it wasn't an excuse to wreak havoc. It, it was uh, 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 not even a perceived, but you know, if you look at the, the Justice Department report, there's like continued issues uh, of um, discrimination or like just the cops treating people very harshly or wrong in that area um, due to the fact that they were economically disempowered right. as well as their race. So um, I wanted to make something that would put you in the shoes of someone who has to kind of deal with that as their daily uh, routine. Uh, just going to the local corner store, which like I also take for granted. I can easily do that. I'm rarely hassled, especially in Los Angeles. It's just, you know, right. it's, maybe the area I live in also, it's not that type of place. But there's many people in America who have to deal with this day in and day out. And so I wanted to make something to kind of like help other people understand that it is an issue. It's not just like this one kid. That one kid is the, that final straw that broke the camel's back. Right. So. I, I think uh, really like part of like, you know, there's the great story that you're, that you're building, I mean, that you have where it's, you know, dealing with each of these frustrations. But the fact mm -hmm. that you have a frustration, like meter, a counter, something, something that is sort of that weighs down on you physically uh, as a part of it, how did you come up with something like that? Uh, because the original prototype started as a, a, a board game. And then so uh, in that context, it really, I had kind of like a, a meter instead. And, and just through some testing, I kind of found that like it's actually a bit more powerful if it goes a little bit higher than that meter and then you can also see physically like uh, it would be great maybe if I actually put weight on people but no, um, physical yeah, weight yeah physical on, weight I yeah. love yeah. the idea that you're just like yeah. standing behind them and it's like okay yeah, we're doing another go. five yeah, pounds yeah, yeah. another five pounds <laughs> and you feel that weight as you're going from yeah. place to place actually having to move people around yeah that uh, that's just something I haven't had the resources to really put it in so I figured you know uh, a nice middle ground and also to kind of keep the very 
very bare simplicity. It's a very minimal game as well. Right. Uh, but to keep the simplicity, I figured like a number reads, and you can understand a number when it goes from like single digits suddenly to like double digits. You're just like, wow, okay, yeah. That's and then the number in itself also isn't even the most the key part. The number kind of just serves to remind the person that like, okay, maybe I shouldn't say something here, which leads to actual frustration. Right. So. Which, and again, like you you look at it and it's like as you said, you may choose a solution that seems perfectly reasonable and rational, but because yeah. of the frustration itself, you become a very, uh, the, the response to that solution or your choice becomes, you know, a little bit outside of what you expected to actually happen. And exactly, I, exactly. And I find that is just extraordinary. For me, like, that's the point where it's mm -hmm. like, not even the number itself, it's like a 12 or 15 or 25, but like, once you see that, uh, the choices that you're making now reflect like this this way that's off to the side i always think of something like like mass effect whenever yeah, they put some yeah. they put down like a sentence or something like that and you're like oh this is exactly what i would say and then once it comes out of his mouth you're like whoa no, that's not, that's not what that I is meant not at all. what i wanted yeah. at all but i feel like this yeah. is much more of a meaningful yeah uh sort of like there's no misinterpretation between what's going on and your frustration, but more of a uh, your actions having a reflection of that frustration. Yes, yeah, and I and I feel like it, 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 in a sense, from my personal experience, when like getting upset or angry, sometimes you know miscommunications do happen. Obviously, when people when tensions are high and emotions are high, so like if you've had to kind of deal with being stopped or being treated a certain way day in and day out. You know, maybe you do intend just to say, "Hey, why are you messing with me?" But it it will come off harsh because you're feeling harsh. So completely. Yeah. Um, what has been the response from other people playing? Uh, I think the game, in a sense, is a little bit self-selecting. So it, it usually attracts people who are kind of like open to engaging with the ideas in general. But that being said, um, still within that group, uh, obviously it's been positive, but it's opened uh, something in them that they did not previously see. It's something that maybe they could intellectualize and they could really uh, empathize, but it brought a new level of understanding. And that, that's basically the feedback I've generally been getting is that like, hey, I already was with this, but now I, I feel like I kind of like get it a, a bit more. You know, when you, even if uh, mimicked, when you're kind of like put through the situation yourself, you can actually like see it. When you feel it, you right. can actually like understand. Yeah, it sort of like gives you a sort of a taste of what's going on yes. without having to uh, to be in that situation, exactly, exactly, uh, which is which is incredible. Hopefully, uh, people will be able to get their hands on it when they go to the firehouse yeah. today and tomorrow. Speaking of which, uh, you know, like I said, like you are someone not only just a great game designer, mm -hmm. uh, someone who's now a finalist for this year. Which again, congratulations! Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, but you're also someone who's also seen been a part of Indicate itself as like to yeah. set up. Uh, set up a lot of these games to help organize, to help like put together the award show, which you still do. Yeah, this year we did the uh, uh, the party for the award show. I wasn't uh, involved in the selection of the awards, but right. for the show, the the party, uh, uh, it was Teddy Diefenbach and I were the sure. co-chairs that arranged that. I've been helping out with Indiecade, uh, like volunteering since 2010 now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've pretty much done many, many different, we're in different hats and you know, the reason for that is because I just believe that uh, places like this are where developers have the freedom to really just come up with very experimental or different ideas. Like my game, it's not digital. Uh, it is very simplistic, and it also has like a political uh, like um, story and meaning. Um, so there's not a lot of places that would invite a game like mine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so, but it's yeah. at the same time, it's telling a story and it's going into something that is very important, especially mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. because when, you know, when you're talking about like when you got the, the idea for it, mm -hmm. it's unfortunate because now it's just like, oh, which incident? Yeah, yeah, was the it one. is like which incident. Yeah. And, it's, and it's almost, yeah. and it is unfortunate that we've come to this point is, I, I feel like something like this is even more uh, needed now yeah. than ever. Uh, to go back to to indicate a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you've been doing this for for quite a long time. Yeah. Like, how have you seen the uh, the festival grow or change? Uh, the festival. It's like seemed to attract um, 
a lot more people. Like I think Sam uh, Roberts, the uh, festival uh, uh, director, was saying that uh, this year they had 1,300 submissions. Yes. You know, and so every year it just grows and grows. Like two years ago, it was like at 800. So yeah, it uh, it's seemed to really gain more attention and gain. Um, you know, just as especially the tools are getting easier and and the um, the people are, indie has kind of like uh, uh, as a thing has come to the forefront. There's always been indie developers. The game industry started as indie developers, but right. uh, they've become more of a, a talked about these days. I'd say so. Uh, I've really seen IndieK grow, and I hope that it continues to grow. Just because it's that place where people can take risks, they can really push the boundaries and. You know, a lot of these people who submit games are in AAA, some of them left AAA, but I, I think it's going to be kind of like this um, thing that feeds each other. Like, all of us play the AAA games, and then uh, uh, hopefully AAA people play these games, and right. so that while some of them, like maybe a game like mine isn't made to, meant to be sold commercially, but maybe there's some ideas from it that can go into a, a large, huge budget game to kind of also move people in that way. So yeah, that's the reason why. Just like uh, hoping to grow the art form. So I, I, I hope that it continues as a mainstay, as like a part of our community. Oh, completely, completely. And of course, uh, ultimately, like where can people actually, you know, experience uh, this game? Okay, uh, if you go to rainbee.ro, there is a digital version. Uh, also, if you were to uh, hit email at the top of that page, I'm happy to send you um, the physical version for you to run in your local communities. I've gotten some requests from um, schools or uh, youth groups and things like that. So I just send out all the materials for free just because it's about the ideas getting out there. That's so, beautiful. Yeah. That's absolutely. Uh, there you go. You should check out the game right now. And Akira, thank you very much thank for you very much, talking Rob. to us. Great.